I'm the director of the Fairness Campaign in Kentucky, and we're going to chat briefly about our legislative loop-de-loop. -loop. Uh, this is the circuitous journey of HIV law in Kentucky uh, from this session. This is actual footage of me in the Kentucky legislative session this year. Yes. <laughs> It's a shit show in Kentucky, largely because we've been taken over by Republicans recently, namely our infamous governor, Matt Bevin. So we have had quite a bit of a journey this year. It started with an HIV criminalization law. This was a law that was targeting uh, folks who had been arrested or detained by peace officers who used saliva, vomit, feces, whatever, as a projectile against the peace officer uh, and would create some additional harsh penalties if they were HIV positive. Um, it was targeting folks who were HIV positive. However, the language was so broad that the bill criminalized the common cold, a communicable disease which could be transmitted to another person through saliva, vomit, mucus, blood, seminal fluid, urine, or feces. Virtually everything is covered in that. And that means that if you have a cold or the flu or anything, you would be subject to this Class C felony, which, which brings with it five years in prison, right? We know that. Uh, and we also know that most of these fluids, you cannot transmit HIV, Hep C, most of these serious communicable diseases that they're talking about, you can't transmit it this way. So we create a proposal we cause enough consternation in the committee that we actually get them debating our idea to move the Class C felony down to a Class A misdemeanor, which is expungible, right? And to change this awful definition of communicable disease uh, so that we're really talking about what are serious communicable diseases that can have a long-term effect on someone's life. Much better definition uh, that we worked with our national partners to come up with. So we cause enough pause in the committee that, by God, by the time it comes to the House floor, uh, the person who proposed the bill made some concessions. He said, okay, I'll take it from a Class C felony down to a Class B felony. Hooray! Still five years in prison. Okay? And let's change this definition. Let's actually go ahead and single out people who are living with HIV and AIDS and hepatitis. Not what we were looking for, right? Okay. It is approved on the House floor. At the very least, it's better than it was originally. But, guess what? Our proposal, five minutes later, also gets approved on the House floor. So we think, what happens there? Our, our language must cancel out the other language, right? No, no, it becomes an absolute shit show. Both <laughs> proposals are approved in the legislature, right? This is where we are at that point. Whoa, oh, yeah, that's exactly what that felt like. And so then it goes, to the chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee, who is all powerful in this instance. He gets to decide whatever the bill is gonna look like. And what does he decide to do? Split the baby, that's right. So what he does is he takes our language around communicable disease, but he still keeps the class D felony, okay? Still marginally better, but not much better. Uh, and so I go to him, I have no hope that we're gonna make any progress, but I go and I beg, and I say, give us the misdemeanor, give us the misdemeanor, please, please, please. He says, no, 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 actual footage of me begging. <laughs> and so what does he do? He says, okay, I am gonna go play, let's make a deal. And he uses a bargaining chip that I didn't even know was on the table. And by God, one minute before the committee hearing, he comes in and he says, I tell you what, I've gotten your proposal. I've gotten your class A misdemeanor. I've gotten your language. But we're going to add this, this weird stuff that has absolutely nothing to do with your bill because that's what the sponsor wanted. And now, do I like this language? This is about police officers issuing citations for misdemeanors that occur outside of their presence. Nothing at all to do with HIV law and policy, right? But I didn't have a choice in this matter. He had made the deal. He got us the language we wanted. By God, we celebrated. But it's still a little weird, right? Because it's, it doesn't have all the language we want. But that's okay. We can celebrate anyway because we avoided this really awful HIV criminalization bill. Got some of the most progressive language in the nation around this type of legislation. And I never had any hope that we would get anywhere at all. But we never gave up. 
in this instance. Uh, and so I hope that you all will continue to not give up, even when you're in faced with adversity and it seems like it's absolutely impossible. Keep fighting for fairness for all y'all.